It's Wednesday, April 8th. I hope everyone is doing well. Hope you are staying home and staying out of any place other than grocery stores or pharmacies so that we can contain as best we can the coronavirus. This morning we're going to be doing morning prayer. Morning prayer be will begin this morning on page 76 of the Book of Common Prayer. And if you're following along on the online Book of Common Prayer, you may um, go to that section called Daily Offices and you will find then Morning Prayer Right to. Again, we're starting on page 76. Six. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Now, if you will turn to page 79, we will confess our sins. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Let's say together, Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open up our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. If you will turn now to page 82, we will say the Jubilate together. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself made us, and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures forever. The psalm appointed for this morning is Psalm 70. Psalm 70 for those of you who are following along in the, on the online uh, Book of Common Prayer. Psalm 70. Be pleased, O God, to deliver me, O O Lord, make haste to help me. Let those who seek my life be ashamed and altogether dismayed. Let those who take pleasure in my misfortune draw back and be disgraced. Let those who say to me, Aha! and gloat over me turn back because they are ashamed. Let all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let those who love your salvation say forever, Great is the Lord. But as for me, 
I am poor and needy. Come to me speedily, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer. O Lord, do not tarry. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning's first reading comes to us from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 50, verses 4 through 9a. The Lord has given me the tongue of a teacher that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen to those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I am not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let them stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This morning we will say together Canticle 9, which is found on page 86. Canticle 9 on 86, the first song of Isaiah. Surely it is God who saves me. I will trust in him and not be afraid. For the Lord is my stronghold and my sure defense, and he will be my savior. Therefore you shall draw water with rejoicing from the springs of salvation. And on that day you shall say, Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make his deeds known among the peoples. See that they remember that his name is exalted. Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things, and this is known in all the world. Cry aloud, inhabitants of Zion, ring out your joy, for the Great One in the midst of you is the Holy One of Israel. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. This morning's second reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sins that cling so closely. And let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such hostility against himself from sinners, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will now say together Canticle 18, which is found on page 93. Canticle 18, the Song of the Lamb, page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for your blood you have redeemed for God. From every family, language, 
people and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. This morning's third reading comes to us from the Gospel of John, chapter 13, verses 21 through 32. At supper with his friends, Jesus was troubled in spirit and declared, Very truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples looked at one another, uncertain of whom he was speaking. One of his disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, was reclining next to him. Simon Peter therefore motioned to him to ask Jesus of whom he was speaking. So while reclining next to Jesus, he asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, It is the one to whom I give this piece of bread when I have dipped it in the dish. So when they had dipped the piece of bread, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. After he received the piece of bread, Satan entered into him. Jesus said to him, Do quickly what you are going to do. Now no one at the table knew why he had said this to him. Some thought that because Judas had the common purse, Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. So after receiving the piece of bread, he immediately went out, and it was night. Here ends the reading. Now if you will turn to page 96, we will say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now if you will turn to page 98, we will say the suffrages. The suffrages indicated B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day, we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never 
hope in vain. The collect for today is found on page 220 of the Book of Common Prayer. It is the collect for Wednesday of Holy Week. Lord God, whose blessed Son, our Savior, gave his body to be whipped and his face to be spit upon, give us grace to accept joyfully the sufferings of the present time, confident of the glory that shall be revealed through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. And now if you will turn to page 99, we will say the collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law and guide our feet in the way of peace that having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A Collect for Peace O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, your humble servants, and all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries. Through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now turning to page 100. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you and for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I invite your intercessions and thanksgivings. Heavenly Father, we pray for all those who are in harm's way. We pray for all those who are serving us, we ask your protection on them, doctors, nurses, lab technicians, aides, scientists and researchers who are trying to find a cure for this coronavirus. We thank you for all those who are serving us, people who are delivering things to us, people who are working in stores that are still open and exposing themselves to this, to this virus. Exposing themselves to this virus on our behalf. And we thank you for teachers and educators who continue to educate our Young, young children, our college students, we ask your blessings and protection on all of those people. We also ask your, ask your healing power be with those who are sick, whether from COVID-19 or other illnesses. We ask your, ask you to bring them back to wholeness. We pray for all those who have died. Let light perpetual shine upon them.
And now if you will turn to page 101, we will say together the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservations, and all the blessings of this life but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to him from generation to generation in the church, and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. That concludes this morning's morning prayer. We will be celebrating evening prayer again this evening at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We hope that you will be able to join us. And tomorrow evening at 7, we will be um, holding, also uh, via the Zoom platform, we will be holding a Maundy Thursday service. So we hope you can join us uh, for that as well. Mother Ann will be here tomorrow morning at 8.30 um, to uh, conduct a prayer service. We hope you will be with her in the morning. And before I close, I would like to say a prayer for all of those who are impacted in one way or another by this, the recent scourge of the coronavirus. Not only those who are serving us, not only those who are helping to protect us and tending to the sick and caring for those who are ill, but those whose economic lives um, have been impacted so greatly by this, this, this virus. For those who are unemployed or whose hours have been cut or those who have been furloughed, we ask your blessings and protection. And we ask that you be with them uh, as they struggle uh, with the financial consequences of, of what is happening around us. And now have a good day, stay in, be safe, and may the Lord bless and keep you. Amen.